you would think that EMS by itself would be easy to fix, but it's so intertwined with the rest of healthcare now, not the way it used to be. Um, so uh, we have some real struggles right now to, that we're dealing with. Yeah, well, so we, we've been talking for a while. We have a more receptive premier than we've had for quite mm -hmm. some time. Even Premier Kenny was a bit receptive on some of this. Like, that's what I say with EMS. There's some good common sense solutions that you, you know you've been pointing out. Others have been pointing out. We're using a lot of ambulances to transport patients that just don't need to be used in that sense when it should be an emergency use. Or they've been draining from rural populations. You know, taking the rural ambulances into the cities and uh, leaving other areas undercovered. Or uh, again, hallway medical care, you know, paramedics yeah. have been used to, to maintain patients. So we know the simple solutions that you're a lay person can see. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. That's not very good. Yet it's like pulling teeth, getting Alberta Health Services to cooperate with changing some of these. And I think you've hit the nail on the head. Uh, Daniel Smith, I think, understands very well. Our premier understands very well exactly what's wrong with EMS. She came to one of our town hall meetings in Airdrie before she was elected mm -hmm. when we were speaking about uh, EMS to the community. And... Alberta Health Services has certainly dragged its feet on this uh, transfer issue. It's been more than a year since they put out that RFP looking for contractors. And I'm not quite sure why it took so long. You know, in northern Alberta, north of Red Deer, 90% of patients enter hospitally, and many of them by air, are moved by private contracted services. This is not a new phenomenon. And there are private contractors here in southern Alberta. There's Aaron Paramedical, Genesis Medi Shuttle. Med Source, it does a lot of oil field work. Uh, Life, uh, I think it's called LifeLink Ambulance. They do a lot of rodeos and standbys. I mean, all of these qualified private operators that use registered paramedics on their ambulances are willing to step up. And in fact, Aaron Paramedical is moving patients almost weekly, still with a phone call. Yeah. Yet they didn't get a they didn't get a shot at the RFP. Yeah, they, they, they brought, put out the RFP, but then they put a whole bunch of roadblocks and, and you know, the usual bureaucratic crap to make and it. And it was almost, all done in secret. Yes. That was part of the frustration. I think us for us dealing with Alberta Health Services and, and EMS now, it's it's not just the fact that they've, they've failed to fulfill their primary mandate, which is the emergency care and transportation of sick and injured people in the community. They've integrated us into healthcare a lot, including putting us in the hallway. Right, and you just can't survive an ambulance. An ambulance service can't survive when half your fleet's in the hallway. So, uh, I think we know what the problems are, and uh, let's talk about this latest uh, contract debacle.